Today on Locked on Rockies. Stop me if you've heard this before. The Rockies are on a losing streak after playing solid baseball. Seems to be quite a pattern. You are Locked On Rockies, your daily Colorado Rockies podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Rock On Rockies fans, welcome into the Locked On Rockies podcast for today, the fifth day of June in the year 2024. I'm your host of the Locked On Rockies podcast, Paul Holden, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. And if your team is the Colorado Rockies, guess what? You are in the right spot. That's what we do around here each and every day. Free and streaming on your favorite streaming services, bringing you your daily Rockies talk here on the Locked On Podcast Network. If you love Rockies baseball and you want to support the show, follow us on all your favorite social medias at LO Rockies. And of course, liking the videos, commenting on the videos, and letting me know what's on your mind when it comes to the Colorado Rockies is the best way to do it. Really appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in to the Locked On Rockies podcast and checking out the show there. Before we dive into everything today, I want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. All right, Rockies fans, uh, how frustrated are you? I, I'm curious here because, you know, are the Reds, are the Reds a good team? Eh, record doesn't say so, but uh, they have the elements that make you think that they can be a good team. This could be a series that could jumpstart the Reds to back to where they were hoping to be. They're a team that doesn't score a lot, but has certainly scored a lot against the Rockies. But I'm frustrated mostly because this pattern has continued since the Rockies have straightened things up. And and, and actually, I've, I've really, this has been something we've seen a lot throughout the Rockies, uh, Rockies history. And we'll talk about not only the Rockies record about them struggling against bad teams, but I want to even just highlight the couple of moments where the Rockies start building something this season, start showing some success. And then it's just a bunch of losses in a row. And I mean, stick with me here a little bit on some of this stuff, because it, it, it's a bit of a stretch and, and it doesn't line up as directly here, but but I do want to follow up with just how often the Rockies start struggling after either a win or a couple of wins or, a, you know, a, a solid week like we saw with the Rockies last homestand. All right, so we all know how the Rockies start the season off, right? They, they, they uh, drop two games in a row to Arizona. They finally pull off the win in game three, but then they rattle off four wins in a row or four losses in a row. They break that streak with the win, then it's two losses in a row. Break that streak with the win, two losses in a row. Break that streak with the win, and it is six losses in a row. There's the win, two losses in a row. There's the win. And finally, here's just a, here's a moment in that San Diego game where it's the same series with Rockies. Go, win, loss, win. But after the Rockies uh, split that series with San Diego, they lose five straight. Okay, they lose five straight. They break that streak against Pittsburgh. They get a win. They lose four straight. Now, here's the winning streak. So there's the seven gamer. But how does the what happens immediately after the seven game losing streak ends? Four straight losses. What happens after, you know, and now you're looking after those back to back series wins against Philly and Cleveland, where you're finally getting a kind of a mix up of win, loss, win, loss, couple of wins here. But, you know, going back and forth and, and kind of how it usually goes. You have four straight losses, and you have two of them at home where you just dominated two of the best teams in baseball. This is the this is the consistency is a massive problem with the Rockies. They don't string together enough solid stretches. They don't have enough where they break up these tough stretches. It's it's not just one loss or two loss or a series loss, and then you bounce back with the series loss. No, the Rockies now have had multiple four plus game losing streaks this season after uh, after solid stretches after wins and the problem with that is that the Rockies are are you know the, when you look at two of them 
there's San Francisco in there a couple of times, so you know that's a problem. And, and of course, Philly dominating the Rockies early. But during these losing streaks, during these four-plus game uh, stretches, the Rockies are playing teams that they should have no trouble with, or teams that they should be beating. In one of those, uh, in one of the five-game losing streaks back at the end of April, you lose, you get swept by Miami, followed by losing two of three to Pittsburgh. Then you lose the to two out of three in Oakland before setting things up. I mean, there's plenty of bad teams in these mixes that the Rockies shouldn't be struggling with. I I I understand that the Reds have have potential. I understand the Reds got a good pitching staff, but that's a team that 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 hasn't been scoring. That's a team that's been one of the worst offenses in baseball. And then they've come into Coors Field and they've now outscored the Rockies seventeen to four in the last two games. The Rockies have been outscored in their last uh, four games by a score of twenty five to five. That's a massive problem. It's and, and, and it just highlights, again, the inconsistencies of this team, the inconsistencies of putting solid stretches together, the inconsistencies of being able to beat bad teams. That's a huge problem. And until the Rockies cannot go through stretches where it's it's losing streaks of four plus, it's 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 losing X out of 10, you know, six out of 10. And, and instead of piecing things together and moving things along there, that's what's really tough about watching this process with the Rockies is 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 that going through these experiences and, and going against the bad teams, they aren't playing up to what they need to be playing. They aren't playing the level of ball that we know that they can play. And that's what's getting in the way of them being able to crawl themselves out of out of the deep, deep hole of the beginning of the year. You're not going to improve the record overall all that much when you continue to have these bad stretches. I, I don't know what it is about the Rockies when, when they get in these funks, but then they can flip the switch and do it all over again. But the problem is here, you got six games on the road here coming up next. I mean, and, and we know the road can be a tough place for the Rockies. The Rockies so far this season uh, have been uh, abysmal on the road. I mean, they have just been a team that, that has simply – but done nothing away from 20th and Blake. They're eight and 23 on the road. The Colorado Rockies are. And again, and, and when you look at these and, and, and another reason why the Rockies go on these stretches is look at the run differential minus 92 for the Rockies. The second worst in baseball only behind the White Sox who have been outscored by a minus 139. Unbelievable. Wow. But my point is this. We can't be fully confident in the Rockies until these types of stretches aren't so frequent. All season long, we have now seen this. We, we have seen these, these moments where these four-game, five-game skids, and that completely halts all the momentum you build from those other things. It really, truly feels like the Rockies take that one step forward, and then it's two steps back. Because these types of series are a problem. These types of series that the Rockies are playing against the Reds highlight that this team still has a ways to go when it comes to being competitive. Competitive teams don't get blown out at home by one of the teams that has uh, has had a struggling uh, a struggle scoring runs and being an offensive threat all season long. Good teams don't have multiple four plus five game losing streaks throughout the regular season and let alone just at the beginning of June. Good teams don't struggle against the bad teams. Good teams don't struggle uh, in these long of stretches. And good and good teams don't struggle on the road this much. It all, it, it matters. Every course field game matters for the Rockies because that is where their bread and butter is supposed to be. And so when a team like the Reds, who ha is familiar with course field, plays, you know, has, has is an NL team that certainly has, has experience going to uh, Coors Field and playing there, but for for an opposing team to just waltz into Coors Field and dominate you so thoroughly, that's a problem. It's it's it, the problems of the Rockies continue to flare up and show. Montas throwing a, 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 I mean, that guy that guy has given up you know has had given up more walks and and, and things than than Ty Block had in this season. 
and yet he's thrown out there a no hitter into the sixth, seventh. I don't know what it is, but I just really doubt the Rockies' ability to make those adjustments consistently. Consistency is the biggest problem with this Rockies team. We've seen it in lineups. We've seen it in, uh, you know, where people are playing. Consistency is a massive, massive problem for the Colorado Rockies. Let's dive in a little bit more to the record for the Rockies against bad teams here. And and, and just, just a little bit more of, 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 of how wild this can be. And, and, and if we look at it a little bit, how different this season could be if you just flip some of this record around. Let's talk about that and more coming up on today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Before we do that, though, got to tell you about the folks that help make this show possible, and that includes Game Time. Game Time is my favorite place to buy tickets, and it will be your favorite place to buy tickets because Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch with killer last minute deals all in prices views from your seat and their lowest price guarantee game time takes the guesswork out of buying mlb tickets maybe you need tickets to today's game maybe you're looking uh ahead and trying to get some tickets there for father's day or things like that well game time's got you covered like i said one of my favorite things about game time is not only can you click the button that says all in fees you're gonna know exactly what you're gonna pay all the fees and prices included but you can also get a great view from your seat. Not just a great view from your seat, but a great view of your seat. So you know exactly where you're going to sit. And the lowest price guarantee will give you the best deal or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with game time. Download the game time app and create an account and use code locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem code l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n-m-l-b for twenty dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed this is the locked on rockies podcast we are free and streaming on your favorite streaming services we are bringing you your daily colorado rockies stock right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, shouting out our everydayers out there. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Thank you for checking us out on your favorite streaming services and on the Locked On Rockies YouTube channel. Be part of the show. Like the videos, comment, subscribe. Let me know what's on your mind when it comes to the Colorado Rockies. And uh, folks, don't forget, you can catch all your uh, baseball action on SiriusXM and the SiriusXM app. Just search Colorado Rockies there and you'll be taken to where you need to go. And after the games, Anilo. Is breaking things down there on the Locked On Rockies postcast. Check it out there on the Locked On Denver Sports YouTube channel. All right, folks. Uh, the Rockies currently have a record of 11 11 against teams above 500 and 10 and 28. 10 and 28 against teams that are under 500 or at 500. 28. So. My question is, what happens if the Rockies can perform against the bad teams? What happens if the Rockies can can make themselves into a threat? Just say you add seven more wins to the Rockies, right? Seven more wins to the Rockies total. They're 28 and 31. And that, and, and so... I know we're saying the what ifs and the blah blah blahs and and, and that I I understand the situation I understand the game we're playing I understand the the frustration but it reminds you when you look back at some of these games and when you look back at some of the ones that the Rockies you know messed up and threw away it reminds me of that Pittsburgh series it reminds me especially of the Miami series it reminds me of the Oakland series. All of these series against all of these teams are winnable. I mean, the Rockies haven't been thoroughly dominated in every single one of these series. Take that first series against Philly, for example. The Rockies lose that first game in in, in extras, and then they lose a one-run game. Imagine if they can even steal a couple of these close games that they've played against above 500 teams. Imagine if they've been able to finally pull off some of the upsets that they they thought. Remember, they had the Rays... 
They had some interesting games against the Rays where they barely lost. They had multiple moments where they had late leads in these games and then lost. So it does go to show you that it did matter how bad the Rockies started the season. Because if you didn't start it so historically bad, and if you haven't underperformed and been underwhelming against the the, the worst teams in baseball or the worst the the teams that are above below five hundred, the Rockies are in a completely different spot right now. If the Rockies played better ball against bad teams, the Rockies could be near 500. The Rockies could be around 500. And it's amazing to think that when you look at the schedule and when you look at the things with the Rockies, their record against the, the good teams or, or, or is 500. That's what you'd be hoping for on, on, on the best case scenario for the Rockies after looking at their schedule this year and, and how things have shaken out. For the Rockies, to even be 500 against the best teams. But we talked all in the first segment about the consistency problem with the Rockies, and these two things go hand in hand. These, these, these are teams that the Rockies should be handling. These are teams that the Rockies have no business losing to. And if you reverse the fortunes of, of Oakland and, and the Miami series and the Toronto series and, and some of these other series here, you do realize that if the Rockies didn't start so historically bad, if the Rockies didn't have so many long stretches of losing baseball, their season is completely different. You sit there and, and, and you're looking at a team. Like I said, we just take we just flip our seven games. So let's 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 try to see if we can find seven games that we flip. Let's take the let's take a sweep in Oakland. And we'll take uh we'll take two out of three in in Miami because I, I firmly believe that the Rockies should have swept Oakland. The Miami game, the Rockies were outscored four to one, but in both games, the Rockies lose one leads and extras. I, I believe the Rockies should have won those. So there's five games right there alone, just in those two teams. And then let's take you know one of the Toronto games where the Rockies lose by two. And let's take let's go and 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 then. Here's the Cincinnati series right here. The problem with being blown out in the Cincinnati series. The point being, or and, and then, then there's the Pittsburgh series as well. There's these series that you can find those seven wins that we're talking about and, and, and maybe go even higher to get the Rockies back to 500. But you can look and you can look and you can find those seven games against bad teams that the Rockies did, that, that the Rockies played poorly or got beat up by bad teams or got dominated by a random pitcher like they did last night. And that highlights how big of the problem the consistency is. If the Rockies were consistent, if the Rockies were gelling, if the Rockies were the well-oiled, were, were a well-oiled machine, they could be flirting with that just below 500 and putting themselves in a situation where they're maybe not competing for the NL West, but, but, but in a better spot for a wild card. Let's let's add the seven wins here to the Rockies. Uh, let's 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 see what that means for the standings. If you add seven wins to the Rockies' uh, uh, record, and you take away those from the losses, the Rockies are still in last place in the NL West. Yes, but they're one game behind San Francisco and Arizona, and just a handful behind San Diego. Putting yourself in a situation in which that all of the NL West matchups matter between those teams going forward between those points because each one of those teams want, would want to be fighting each other to get ahead in the pole position. If you can get second place in the NL West, there's a good chance you're in the fight for a wild card spot. Absolutely. There's a lot of good teams out there, but the NL is weird, weird, in a weird, weird spot this year, even with the great teams that it has. So my point is this, until the Rockies, it's, it's consistency, it's beating bad teams, it's, it, it's not getting dominated by bad teams or under 500 teams. I mean, because even a, an under 500 team doesn't necessarily mean that, that they're quote unquote, a bad team. But the pro again, the problem remains at this team's inability to, str to, to string together consistent, solid stretches. And we've been seeing a little bit more than that than late in May, but we've still seen two four-game skids in this, in this month mixed in with those wins and losses. 
So can the Rockies stop that damage? Can the Rockies negate that and put themselves on a path towards consistent success instead of a bumpy road of God knows what? It's tough. It is tough. Because that's when you're looking at that type of stuff, you're, you're, you're just like, wow. It's not that far off. It's a stretch. Absolutely. I understand. I'm playing the what if game. I get that. But you can at least look there and you can and you can at least ponder if those things, if the ball does go the Rockies way, the season is in a different spot. But it's how the Rockies can create those opportunities and consistently create those opportunities. That's a problem. All right, let's look ahead to the finale here today. Let's take a look at what the Rockies are going to be doing on this day game and look ahead as well, because plain and simple right here, you can't get swept. We'll talk about that more coming up on today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Before we do that, though, got to tell you about the folks that help make this show possible, and that includes... FanDuel. Yes, that's right. FanDuel is America's number one sports book, and you can get in on all the playoff action all postseason long. Hoops, hockey, it's time to crown a winner. Well, why not get on the action and make yourself a winner? Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's right. That's $150 bucks to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. You can visit fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. But don't worry, it's not just the playoffs for hoops. They got all your Rockies uh, betting action. You could go take Rockies money line. Maybe you want to do a little parlay and build some hits together. It's a day game at course. You never know. Could be a fun one, could be some fireworks. So maybe you want to get in there and and and, and uh, hope for some success for those Rockos as they get the uh, the offense going. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on. I'm fanduel. America's number one sports book. This is the Locked On Rockies podcast. We are indeed free and streaming on your favorite streaming services, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. If your team is the Colorado Rockies, guess what? You're in the right spot because that's what we do around here each and every day, bringing you Rockies baseball free and streaming on your favorite streaming services. I'm Paul Holden. I am your Rockies fan extraordinaire. You can find me at Paul Holden 33. Shout outs again to our everydayers. Shout outs to all of you. Make sure you're catching the Locked on Rockies postcasts available to you after the show and making sure that you're checking out SiriusXM to get all your play-by-play -play action all season long. All right, Rockies look to avoid the sweep and look to avoid their fifth straight loss. Woof, fifth straight loss. And uh, they turn to Dakota Hudson to do it. Dakota Hudson is 2-7 and seven with a 5.02 ERA, 1.48 whip, 57.1 innings pitched there, 56 hits, 31 strikeouts, 29 walks to five home runs. Graham Ashcraft for the Reds, 4-3, and 4.76 ERA with a 1.45 ERA, 64 hits, 47 strikeouts, 21 walks, nine home runs. Two pitchers that are kind of similar. You know, two pitchers that have had some uh, walk issues. Uh, Ashcraft able to, to to get the strikeout more effective as the strikeouts, which isn't that surprising, I guess, when you can, when you're comparing Rockies pitchers to to others. The the strikeout numbers continue to be something that uh, the Rockies aren't necessarily a great great strikeout team. But this is again an, another situation where I looked at Montas's line last night and I said. This is a guy that the Rockies can get to if they, if they get some patience and are able to, to do some damage. But I got to back up. I got to hold my breath because this team showed us last night that they are unable to, uh, to get the job done against some of these pitchers. So this is a game, again, prove it. This is another moment where I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm asking the Rockies to prove it. Another situation where I think the Rockies need to really go out there and handle business because I, I, I don't, I know that, 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 that the stuff was working last night for Montas, but when I'm, when I'm seeing the lines, when I'm seeing this team, when I'm seeing this Reds team, I haven't been overly impressed with what they've been able to do other than the fact that they've really turned on the offense. 
And the Reds are starting to heat up a little bit as well. They've won four of their last five. And get, and again, it's it's about the role. It's about the momentum. So when I see these teams, I mean, that's that's kind of my whole theme, right? Of this whole thing. I, I just what what's so frustrating about the Rockies is in these situations. I I, I think that this is a moment, and the and this whole series. This is this should be a moment where the Rockies rise to the occasion. This this should be a moment where where we see the new look Rockies, where we see. What's been working for the Rockies come to fruition and, and take down these teams. It's amazing the different. It, it, it just feels like they play the Dodgers and their souls just get sucked out of them. You know, it it it, it seems like that this team. Like I, I, it's just amazing to me with these with these stretches and everything, and against these type of teams where. This should have been the bounce back. You know, a little a little home series against a bad team before going out on the road, like that should be something that the Rockies really look forward to. That should be the Rockies bread and butter. So and, and plain and simple, the Rockies got to get after it. The Rockies got to get after this guy. The Rockies got to, got to make this a miserable, you know, the Rockies have to be the team that that's, that's hitting the, the ball all over the yard. The Rockies need to be that team. They can't continue to get absolutely blown out and dominated at home by a team where you can argue that the Rockies and Reds are pretty similar. I mean, statistically, the Reds are a worse offense in some areas. So it's, it's again, how do you string together the good times? How do you make it? How do you win consistently? The Rockies haven't been able to figure that out. They've had a couple of good stretches, sure. They had the winning streak. But again, we've pointed out multiple times how this team continues to go through those bad stretches, and that's what sinks your season. That's what sinks your chances. That's what gets you know fans a little bit more frustrated is because this team has shown that they can take down the best in baseball. But then a fourth arm in the rotation comes into Coors Field and holds you to no hits until the seventh inning. A massive, massive problem for the Colorado Rockies that they have not been able to fix. Plain and simple, you can't get swept, though. You can't get swept in this series. That's absolutely unacceptable. You, the, the, this team is it, its so frustrating how many times they build up the momentum and goodwill, and then it's all washed away. Can't go play six straight on the road against St. Louis and Minnesota without taking this one game from Cincinnati. You got to go on the road trip on a good note. And again, this is a guy that 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 has things that the Rockies should be able to get to. Nine home runs given up on the season, twenty-one walks. Rockies got to be careful because the strikeout is a factor for Ashcraft. Not a dominant strikeout guy, but certainly a, a, a strikeout potential. But two guys that have had have have a, almost near one five whips on the bump today. Two guys with over 4.75 ERAs on the bump today. And the Rockies need Hudson to be the sharp one. And the Rockies offense needs to wake the heck up and get back in this series because any sweeps at home by the opposing teams, completely unacceptable. Folks, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day. Day game heading your way for the Rockies. Uh, so that's going to be happening at 110 first pitch. Don't miss out on all the action there. And uh, we'll be breaking it all down right here on the Locked On Rockies podcast and on the Locked On Rockies postcast. So don't miss out on that. For your second listen of the day, go check out Locked On MLB. And if you need more Colorado sports coverage, Locked On Broncos, Locked On Avalanche, Locked On Nuggets, and Locked On Buffs got you covered. And of course, all season long, we got you covered for Rockies baseball right here on the Locked On Rockies podcast. And uh, folks, let me know what's on your mind. Remember, your comments, your likes, your subscribes, all that stuff on the Locked on Rockies YouTube video is a, er, channel is a massive, massive help. So here's hoping the Rockies don't get swept, but we'll be here's hoping to another great podcast tomorrow. We'll talk to you later here on the Locked on Rockies podcast.